Now let's bring in the Senator himself. Jeff Flake joins us from the Capitol this morning. Senator Flake, thank you for joining us. Well, well you've thank heard you. the House. Sarah Sanders calls your speech pet, petty. Steve Bannon, an ally of the president, another day, another scalp. And the AP is reporting that the president is privately taking credit for forcing you and Bob Corker out of the Senate. Have you given Trump a victory by retiring? Oh, I don't know if you can put it like that. I, I just can't continue uh, with this kind of politics. I, I couldn't go on and run the kind of campaign that I wanted to run and, and, and win in this kind of Republican Party. So uh, I guess the president uh, does uh, deserve credit, if you want to call it that. So what happens next? You say it's time for our complicity and accommodation of the unacceptable to end. Right. Bob Corker aside, are your Republican colleagues now in the Senate being complicit by staying silent? You know, a lot of uh, my colleagues have spoken out and I think a, a lot more will. Uh, what I tried to say in the speech is the longer we wait, um, the more we basically normalize this kind of behavior and these kind of politics and, and we can't do that. Uh, we just can't. We've gone nine months into the administration. Uh, those of us who had hoped for a pivot, I think, have agreed now it's just not going to come. And so it's up to us to stand up and say this is not acceptable. Are words enough, though, Senator? What should you and your colleagues be doing? Well, certainly if the president uh, proposes policies, if he, if he acts on some of the threats that he's made, for example, to go after the press, to go after the licenses of some of the networks uh, that have been critical, um, then certainly we act. Um, so on policy, if we must, but certainly just to speak out against uh, uh, the, the tweeting and uh, the behavior that just isn't becoming and is beneath the office of the president. It seems like, as you say, a lot of your colleagues may agree with you privately. Some are speaking out as well, but there also seems to be a pretty prevalent view that the party just has to stick together to get tax cuts. And I guess my question is, is that prize worth the price? Well, I, I talked in the, in the book I, I wrote earlier about the Faustian bargain that uh, we seem to have struck um, on, on many of these issues. And uh, I, I think there is a risk if we continue to, to just ignore uh, behavior that we shouldn't ignore. And when the president is challenging norms that have, have been with us for, uh, for a long time, particularly in the international realm, uh, these have long lasting implications that, that we simply shouldn't ignore. And on that tax bill, like Senator Corker, will you oppose it if it increases the deficit? Is that one of your principles, one of the dictates of your conscience? I'm, I'm certainly a supply sider. I believe that uh, tax cuts, some tax cuts, actually do produce economic growth. So you might have some short-term uh, deficits, but I am not an unqualified tax, um, supply sider. And I am extremely concerned about our looming debt and our deficit. And so. Uh, we're going to have to look at the package and see what it does. And finally, how about the future of your fight against President Trump? Where does it go next? Are you open to challenging him in 2020? Uh, that, that's a, a long way away. I'm, I'm focused on my next uh, 14 months in the Senate and making sure that, uh, that we get some good policy. Uh, there are some things that I, I want to accomplish in the short term, certainly myself and uh, Senator Tim Kaine are pushing an authorization for use of military force. Um, there's the DACA issue that we need to do and broader immigration policy. So I'm going to focus on those things. But not ruling out a challenge in 2020. You know, that's a long time away. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll deal that with that when it comes to it. Senator Flake, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you.